Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel, Milan Garcon. I am Milan Garcon. Today's Moonshot Monday and I am really exhausted. I'm super tired. I had a photo shoot yesterday, which went amazing. I cannot wait to the pictures drop. Make sure you're following me at Milan Garcon on Instagram. But yeah, I am like exhausted. I have not a ounce of energy left in my body and I'm okay with that. It's Monday, I have nothing to do except what I'm doing right now and uploading last week's Mojo Monday. So, I just wanna get this done with. I did get a request of a topic that someone wanted me to talk about and it is dating while trans. And I can say it is definitely a thing. It is definitely unique and we're definitely gonna talk about it, but you know how we do. to get ready for Moonshot Monday. Dating while trans. Dating has been very fun this past year. I will say that. It's been full of ups and downs. I always clean off this little thing because, you know, this top is exposed. It's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. Dating while trans is a very unique experience, I think. And most girls can attest to this. Well, all girls can attest to this. You attract... A lot of heterosexual guys, you attract a lot of DL men. You attract a lot of men who are pansexual, meaning they are attracted to anything, which most guys really are, honestly, like, if we're being honest. Without being disrespectful and offending anyone, it is a very um, niche dating pool. And you actually attract a lot of people. You, you attract, I attract a lot of women, too. And that's cool with me. But I think the thing with dating while trans, which I think a lot of women can also, like cis women can also agree with, is like really having trouble with what guys' intentions are with you. And I think with being trans, a lot of times guys just want to fetishize us and just like have the fantasy of being with, with someone who... And their fantasy, like, is very, like, best of both worlds, right? And even outside of that, you know, we are a percentage of the population. We are a minority. So it's not like people encounter girls like us and girls like me every day. So, hold on. Just want to get all these little bubbles out. Um, But, yeah, girls like me aren't just on every block okay you either got to know where the girls are you got to be a part of the scene that they're in you like you got to get in where you fit in no shade if you're not one of the girls so i think realizing that going from being like non-binary where i felt like you know if a guy was like, flirting with me, it's like, I kind of know, like, he got to know T. Like, I'm not on no moans. Like, you know, she's not the softest. She wasn't the softest girl in the motherfucking tissue box. But I was always kind, honey, and I was always really feminine. So I did always attract men and kind of like the men that I attract now. But now it's like, no, I attract men. And I love that, but it's it's a scary place because it's like, I've wanted that type of male attention or felt like that's the type of male attention that I deserve and and felt natural to me and not getting caught up in getting that attention and thinking like, oh my God, I finally got it because it's like, no, guys are still trash. So you have to be very careful. You can't look at them all the same. You can't like use men for your own validation and like validation of your womanhood because that was something that I felt like I was kind of starting to do which I'm glad I clocked and had girls in my corner that were like honey I think that you're going down this route of like you know using men to validate your womanhood and validate your transness and all of that and like make you feel like the girl and you have to make yourself feel like that first because guys are just dickheads for for lack of better words so um yeah, I also feel like I had a lot of caffeine today and not a lot of water, so hopefully I don't pass out while I do this. Mm. But before I take this needle off, I am going to just clean my arm. Can I just lift it all the way? Like, is that going to make it? Oh, no, we're fine. Um, I'm just going to clean my arm really quickly. I'm really trying to do this with my favorite turtleneck on. This brand is like an Amazon Prime brand. They're like really amazing. 
Um, it's like they're really soft, really stretchy, as you can see. They are super duper duper warm. No, I don't have a link. I'm not. I do. I do have the associates thing, but um, that's not what I'd be worried about, honey. Just if you like the if if you like the what call this, go get them yourself. But like using men for your own validation is a very dangerous thing because men will disappoint you nine times out of ten. Now, outside of those like things that I think a lot of women go through during puberty, right? So it's like we're kind of late to the game. That's something that I've also taken into account as well. Like, men have been menning, and women have been womening since the day that they were born, right? But when you're trans, you often do your 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 second puberty or you're coming into yourself and like growing up in the in the mind and body that you you know relate to. Um, you do that a little bit later, so you're kind of behind the curve. You're behind the learning curve. So everyone else has, like, like men have an advantage because they've been doing this their whole life. They've been treating women a certain way their whole life. And believe Let's put the cat back on that. I put everything in my in my thing. My pharmacy is like the best. But where did I leave off? Are we bleeding? We're not. And we're wearing wine. Oh my god. Um, actually, that's like too small. I'm sorry, y'all. This is why I order these off. I get everything off Amazon, but I order that off Amazon. It's like 97% alcohol or whatever. Yes. It is no. I'm gonna leave that up though, cause I don't want. Oh, y'all see me try to make a muscle? Nothing happened. Um, we love that, but I'm gonna just leave that like that for a second, cause I don't want any blood to get on my shirt. So yeah, guys kind of have an advantage in 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 the whole spitting game, the whole playing games, even being serious and talking a good game. Like you just kind of gotta learn as you go, but you have to learn at a very quick pace because we all grown. No shade, like we grown. I'm, I'm, and, and I'm speaking from my experience of transitioning as an adult. Like, we grown. So I don't have no time to be, like, playing catch up because I'm going to end up left out. Or I'm going to end up somewhere crying in a corner. And I'm done with that. So that's been a challenge. I think another thing that's been a challenge is not attaching myself to men because, like, just because they're doing the bare minimum. Like, actually understanding what the bare minimum is from guys. Because it's like, I'm, dating is just different. Like, guys that date women and trans women do not date the same way guys, like, men that date men date them. Like, it's, it's not the same thing. It's more of, like, a natural courting situation, or should be, but in 2024 do people even court people do people even date i've been trying to date intentionally meaning not like just because a guy gives me attention i don't give him attention back like no you have to earn my attention and there are many ways that you can earn my attention if you're like serious and you being serious about me doesn't mean that oh we're gonna end up in this relationship or whatever sorry it doesn't mean that we're gonna end up in this relationship or whatever but it just means that like you respect me you value me um you treat me the ways that i would want to be treated or treat myself or treat someone else you know just like that mutual respect and making them go above that because i am the prize like and i'm not just the prize i'm the i'm, I'm the prize with the surprise so it's like you're not going to be treating me any kind of way and i think once you start to realize that like guys are not going anywhere they're never going to stop chasing you it doesn't matter how far you are in your transition. doesn't matter how much surgeries you have. The men are going to be men about the situation. And real, like just giving yourself, you know, the space to date if you want to, not date if you don't want to, date without, you know, being sexually active. You can go through a whole phase if you want. You know, just giving yourself the freedom to do what you want to do and not basing it off of, what men want or, or or basing everything you do off the male gaze like making sure that you are still centering yourself work on yourself to love yourself 
I think that's very important. That's something that I am working on, something that I think is not just like this one and done type thing. I think as you go on in life, you kind of have to reconfigure a lot of things that you figure out about yourself because we all change as people. So like, like for example, there was a guy that, you know, was taking me out last summer and, and like, I was so like, oh my God, like he really likes me. I really like him whole time. Yeah, we still talk and we still see each other. Like, I call him my sneaky link or whatever. But it's just like realizing that that's not what I thought was happening is not what was really happening. I haven't wanted to be in a, be in a relationship since my last relationship. Like, I'm just not interested. I'm focused on a lot of other things. And I just feel like... One, therapy is needed. Two, I'm going to be at a certain place in my career. Not putting anything on hold saying, no, don't talk to me. But just like, that's not my intention when I am meeting people or, or, or dating someone. If that happens, it happens. But, you know, sometimes you reach a point in life where it's like, I am dating to marry. I am dating to be in a long-term relationship. Like, that's not my goal. That's not my point right now. My point is to just kind of explore, see what I like, and and really... Just continue to learn about myself as a young adult that is approaching their 30s. And I think that that's something that every 90s baby right now can, like, attest to when you're approaching 30, 94 and down. Us that are 94, this is our last year in our in our 20s. Some people have already moved on and transitioned to their 30s. And I'm not, I'm not afraid of it. I'm excited because I feel like dating in my 30s is going to be really fab, really intense. But I just think that, like... The biggest thing that most girls go through is like, does this guy like me as a person? Does he like my personality? Does he, you know, find me attractive and not just sexually attractive, but just like attractive mentally, spiritually and physically? You know, does he value me as a three dimensional character? Is he going to like listen to my bullshit when I'm having a mood swing? Or does he just want what he saw on some x-rated site like is he trying to fulfill some fantasy that he has and that will make you feel like you're just being used that will make you feel like an object that will make you feel less than it will make you feel dehumanized because a lot of times even in that situation where you think like you're thinking that you guys are engaging in i call it adult fellowship and you think it's like this positive experience it's nice this, it feels good and, and it's supposed to feel good before, during, and after. And then after you end up just feeling like, what just happened? Because that person literally just used you in that moment and you feel it, like you know it. Like there are, there are, like men telling themselves all the time. So I think really filtering the men that you give your attention to. And even if you want to give your attention to everybody, the men that you, you know, let, let into your vulnerable space, whatever that is for you. I think that is very important to keep an eye on and to continue to, you know, level up and add standards. Like you can have your standards on what you'll what you'll deal with from a guy or what you'll put up with and, and your boundaries. But I feel like always raise the price and add tax. It's no shade. Like literally and figuratively. So in dating, I feel like where I'm at right now is I'm I'm at a place of I'm chilling. If we vibe, we vibe. I'm not taking anything too serious because the minute you start taking something serious, guys can tell and then they start like doing dumb shit to like make you either really chase them because guys want to be chased now or they start like they'll just ghost you because it's like oh she and her feelings like this wasn't about that you know keeping those feelings in check girls and then also know that men are very emotional they just don't know how to process those emotions like I could tell you like if if like, your hormones control your thoughts. Your hormones control your actions. Your hormones control, you know, the other chemicals that are released in your body, like dopamine and all of that. Like, that's all controlled by hormones. So, oh, please say, okay. So, with that, it's like, they don't process their emotions at, at all, nor do they do it the same, even if they do process them. And... I feel like once guys start to, like, because a lot of times they'll mess with the girls and they thinking, oh, you know... She just to hit it and quit it, or I just want to see what it's about, or you know, I like women of all all experiences, whether they are cis women, trans women, you know, feminine, um, not feminine, like they just like women. Some some men are just attracted to femininity, and I think sometimes guys think that they're mentally strong enough to deal with 
women or a number of women and not catch feelings. And when they do catch feelings, they do the same thing when you catch feelings. They pull away. They try to get you to argue by just doing dumb stuff. And that way they can like have an easy way out or they'll ghost you because it's like, oh my God, I like her. Oh my God, I have feelings. I'm catching feelings. That's not what I wanted to do. I just wanted to hit it and quit it. And now you feel like, well, what did I do wrong? Or is there some other girl that's prettier than me, better than me, nicer than me? Or maybe they like mean girls. Like, am I not mean enough? Like you start to question yourself. Always realize guys are going to do what guys do. And it has nothing to do with you. So with that being said, that has been, you know, my revelation of dating while trans. I'm sure it's going to change. I always, like, in my head, I be thinking, uh-huh, because when I get my titties down, all them niggas that was trying to, trying to play me or not really play me because I can't really be played because I never put myself out there to be played. But it's been certain situations where my feelings have been hurt. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to fraud. And in my head, I'm just like... Oh, watch when I get my titties on. You're going to be trying to spin the blog. And I am going to carry. I'm going to get very much. Who are you? You ain't fucking. Fuck oh, buddy. Like, you ain't fucking. Nigga, you ain't fucking. Nigga, buddy. Like, no. So, um, with that being said, it's been a, it's been a quite a fun Moan Shop Monday. I think this brought my energy up. And I am so glad that you guys are here with me. <laughs> going through the journey. Going through the motions. Doing what the girls got to do. To be the girl. And with that being said, it's been real and it's been fun. And I'm going to have to catch you in my next one. Mwah! <laughs>